Hey, welcome back to Progressive E. So today I'm teaching you how to update your X9000 firmware, whether it's bricked or whether it's not bricked. I'm gonna run you through that now, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, so obviously you've got a uh, brand new X9000 here. So you want to update the firmware in this. The first thing you want to look for is where you plugged in the Bluetooth dongle. Now, the programming cable that you're going to get from EBMX is going to, it's probably going to look a little bit different to this, but pretty similar. So this might be black, for instance. This one here is called your ST link. And this is basically the VESC link. So essentially, we're going to flash with this if we're bricked and we're going to run you through that process. But everything we want to control and flash we can do with VESC on this one here. So the first thing you want to do is basically locate where you've plugged this Bluetooth one into from your controller and obviously unplug it. So uh, once you've obviously unplugged it, one thing I want to stress about is there's two arrows and basically you want to make sure that these things are lined up. So don't forget whether you've ever grabbed your fingers before and shoved them straight in your eyes, but that's exactly the same thing as if you don't line this up and you just push these together. Of course, another thing I want to kind of point out as well is everyone kind of hides this Bluetooth thing either on their handlebars or somewhere. I like to like keep it here or somewhere near the controller because there is going to be updates. Yes, uh, probably in the future, I'm hoping they will be Bluetooth, but for now they're going to be cable. Cable super, super reliable. Um, I just awkwardly kind of shove this thing in here and just get it out with a screwdriver somehow. As you can see me very much struggling, but it does come out. The other thing I did as well is I basically just cut this section off so that way it can kind of sit flush. Never falls out, never falls out, never falls out while riding. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna do the ST-Link flush. The reason why you would do this is if your controller is bricked, or if you've tried to connect to the, the VESC PC software and it keeps saying that it can't find the VESC or that no USB is detected, basically this will allow us to flash the firmware without any VESC connection and then we should be able to open the VESC PC app and then continue the, uh, the rest of the uh, setup. So first up, pretty much push connect. It's pretty straightforward. You're basically going to see a whole lot of random gibberish come up. If you can read that, that's uh, good for you. I definitely can't. The next step is... If you've got a bricked controller, you can literally click this one and essentially go full chip erase. This will erase everything on the chip. So if everything's bricked, basically we can just start again from where we were. Um, once you've done that, you can come, come over to here and click program verify. So basically you've got a few different options here. So verify why programming is what you want selected. Reset after programming, that's also what you want as well. So click start. We'll run through this process one more time again. So we'll basically load the same one twice. I found that maybe out of every 20 people I've probably helped with this, it, it doesn't flash correctly. So do it twice. It will say program memory checksum and we know we're all sweet to go. Okay, so now that's flashed. One thing to remember as well, if you have connection issues or you have flashing issues, this little, uh, this little bad boy here, the ST-Link, is sensitive to high voltages. So I've noticed some people have issues flashing. If you've got a 72 volt battery, maybe get the charge down to 50% or 40%. Or if you've got a 60 volt battery, plug that in. If you're still having no luck getting connections or getting a flush with basically those voltages, you can use a power supply. I found anything above 25 volts is pretty successful. I haven't had a single person yet that uh, hasn't been able to flash this on 60 volts or you know, 65 volts, but just something to be aware that it can happen. Um, and that's more on the Eskate well where I've heard that, but just a bit of advice on that one there. So another super quick one, I've got this little uh, USB extension thing. So this hasn't happened but until uh, recently, but we're basically trying to plug the ST-Link in here. And when you come over to your screen and you go to connect, it'll basically say no ST-Link is connected. It's basically just a bad connection on the USB. I've used this a lot of times now. So if you're struggling, I've just found that uh, if I've got something that kind of holds it in place a bit better, as you can see, we'll plug that in and then basically push connect and now we're connected to the bike again. So just remember if you're having connection issues, maybe try something like a USB hub. It just got us this before. Uh, so yeah, just something to think about. That could save you hours of fun. Okay, so uh, got the bike back on. We have loaded vest now. We've got our vest USB plugged in. First thing we want to do is literally click auto connect we know we're connected basically we can see app configuration updated the first thing i want to do on this is basically load our motor settings and load our app settings now if you could connect to the vesc app 
or the Vest PC app, I should say, if you connect to that fine, you, you don't need to do the ST-Link update. I just wanted to put that in this video so you guys were super covered and you just had all the options there. So I'm gonna quickly run how you'd update your firmware on the VESC now. It's pretty simple, make sure you're connected. If we come over to the left-hand side, we can basically see our um, real-time data. We can just kind of see we've got some current and some movement going on. This graph will actually pause, so I can give you an example what that'll look like. It'll pause like this if we aren't connected. And if we are connected, it'll basically keep running. So that way, you know, you connect to the bike. If you come up to here and you want to click firmware, once you're in firmware, click on bootloader. First thing you want to do is click this down arrow. Basically run a bootloader. Another thing to remember too, you want to make sure this says generic. If it gives you another option, just make sure it is definitely on generic. Once we've run the bootloader, that means the VESC is then ready to accept some new firmware. Come over to here. You can see I've already got a file here that I've previously used. So you want to, in, in this, basically in this box, click here, you'll select what, what hex file you're after. And all you want to do is click the down arrow again. It's basically going to reload everything. And we'll just let that run through. Okay, so once it's uploaded, it'll basically tell you the firmware upload is done. And it says you must wait 10 seconds. Once again, you need to wait for this little tiny noise. Uh, please laugh me because it's nothing what it sounds like, but it's high pitched and that's what it does. If you turn off the controller before it makes that chirp noise, you'll basically have to run through that ST-Link update again. You'll essentially brick the controller. So you need to wait for it to update. So that's pretty much the update process. I'm now going to just quickly run through a bit of the things you can change in the app so you know how the VESC PC app works compared to the phone app. A lot of this stuff will also be backwards compatible with other VESC stuff. So if you know anyone who's trying to get some VESC stuff working or trying to flash, this will also help them as well. Sweet. So now you got VEST set up. I'm just going to show you how to set the bike up using the VEST PC tool. That's a hard word to say all the time. Not VEST app, but VEST PC tool. And we're going to use the app inside the VEST PC tool just to make it even easier. So first thing I always like to do is basically make sure what bike I've got. So it says stocks are a light B. That's correct. Another thing you should do before you do anything, actually, I kind of stuffed up there, but literally click update configuration on both the motor and the app so if you see that app up arrow that'll read what we have and if you see the app down arrow that'll basically write the same goes with the m tab which is stands for motor configuration so we want to read it and we want to write it so if we don't read it first any settings that we change we might accidentally save settings that we don't want so it's always imp important to read first and then kind of run down that way so we'll, we'll start off with in advanced motor so you can see in this tab here I'm going to go 100% field weakening because can and uh, motor direction for me is going to be false because I don't wire to colors. I wire for neatness and I know mine's backwards. Another thing to also look at in this section here is uh, the acceleration temperature decrease. You want to make sure this is zero. You can see it in the EBMX app as well. You want to make sure that's zero basically. And I've probably cocked up here. No, I haven't cocked up, Troy. Did all right. So you can see we've got KORS motor selected now. We've got our temperatures on, which is what we want. A lot of this stuff you won't have to touch. And then we want to click write app config. And if we now read it, if we now read it, boom, we've now got some different temperature values that have popped up here, which that's correct for the KO. Our field weakening stuck. Everything's where it needs to be. We'll then go into peripherals. You can see your bike model, stock light B, that's correct. My tire diameter, we have run through this in a previous video, but you basically need to measure the whole wheel to get that wheel diameter. It's not just, if you've got a 16 inch wheel, you don't put in 16 inches. It's, it's basically 16 inch plus the tire is what you're after in that one. So 919 gear ratio is the stock belt drive, which is what I run. Yes, I run 23, 24 kilowatts on that. It seems to hold up for a month or two. I'm happy changing belts. Doesn't doesn't phase me. You'll notice if you use the EBMX app, a lot of these things are the exact same things are in the app, but it's in different locations. It's just kind of not as well laid out in VESC really. So I run a different battery. It is 20S and I do have an updated harness, etc. So I want to run unlimited. We want to click right again. And the next step has got to be race mode. 
I don't use sport at all. The only time I'll use sport is if I want to use a speed limiter, for instance. So a lot of you enduro guys, you should really experiment with lowering the speed down. It actually feels like the bike has first gear. It's super cool, worth doing. So I'll run 17 kilowatts in mode one and 500 phase. I'll run 20 kilowatts and 700 phase for mode two. I'll run 25 kilowatt and 800 phase for mode three. This speed limit here is what I was talking about. If you lower this speed limit to 20 kilometers or if you're not sure what that works out in miles, but it's a really cool thing. It acts like it's really cool for uh, rock jumps and things like that. So a lot of enduro guys love it. I think it's a cool move. I'll just set this to 295 and be sensible. The reverse gear strength, I always have this maxed out to, well, close to maxed out, 95. Once again, we're going to go right app config. Go through our throttle. I like to use regen. I use a small amount. I just use 10%. You can also see you've got your race mode regen. That directly relates to this bad boy here. So basically, that's what we're controlling when we do that. So I normally have that set at 95%. You'll notice I never max everything out. I'm always like a little bit lenient. I just never believe that software is perfect. And if you give it a bit of leeway, you, you shouldn't ever have any issues. Over to the uh, throttle curve. I always run a little tiny bit of expo. It just gives it a little bit more pop where I want it. The other thing to look at as well is your mapping. So your mapping is the voltage. So if you're having a error 23, then that's because this is wrong. So I run a domino throttle. So we want 0.0, .0 volts as our min voltage and we want 5.00 as our max voltage. I also find with those voltage readings chucked in there, 4% is a good dead band measure. So we'll click save. If I turn on my SW102 display now, we'll see we have no errors. All right, so we've set all that up, but now I'm gonna pull the throttle and I know for a fact that my wheel is not gonna move. So I'm pulling the throttle. Nothing's happening. Everything's fine on VESC. My issue is basically the fact that the whole sensor isn't calibrated. So it's super easy to do. If we come over to FOC here and click whole sensors, you'll see it says 10 amp in this detect whole sensors. We want to change this to 40. And all you want to do is click play. And now the wheel's going to move. So make sure it is on a stand. Otherwise, you're not going to be having a real good time. Cool, once that's done, you're gonna look at your results and you'll see they're very different. You'll see this is the whole table and it basically lays out left to right, up to down. You can see 255 is correct, but then the rest is way out. All you wanna do is click apply and then you wanna click right. And now with the magic of things and stuff, my motor goes backwards. So you're like, oh shit. That's not good, that's not what I want. And if I put it in reverse, I might have goes forward. And that's because I like to make wiring look neat and not follow color codes. So to fix that, super easy. There's two ways you can do it. You, you did see me earlier change the motor direction in the app. Sometimes I've found that hasn't saved. Another way how to do that is literally go into general settings and you will see invert motor direction. Literally just turn that to false. And then once again, click right on motor config. Oh, so now we've done that. Now we can throttle. And we're sweet. So once you've done all that, just a real quick check of everything. Sometimes these things don't save. I just want to be, I just want to cover anything that could happen to you. So if you think this isn't working, so we're going to turn off the bike. We're going to turn it on, turn on the display. Mint Gary. Okay, so I hope that helps everyone out. Vesk is a little bit tricky, but if you follow that guide step by step, you definitely can't go wrong. It'd be an absolute barrel of monkeys if you liked and even cooler if you subscribed. See you on the next one.